How's it going, Internet? Today we're going to be looking at what I think is the best piston helicopter ever made. And you're watching Relative Motion, the channel all about showing you the best means of getting you wherever you need to go. We're hopping back to Season 1 for this episode. We're going to start looking at some more piston helicopters again. And this helicopter is fairly rare, but even today is currently available as a kit. So if you want to build one yourself, or you're looking for a used one, I really don't think you'll go wrong buying one of these awesome machines. So the Hummingbird is a really awesome helicopter. That was released back in 1987 by Vertical Aviation Technology. This company is out of Florida, and one of the other things they're most well known for is converting the last nine of the Sikorsky 55s to turbine engines. These are really great piston helicopters back in the day, which is a helicopter I'll definitely be doing a video on later in this series. So I'd really hope you would consider subscribing below to stay tuned for more episodes on this channel. Unfortunately, I think when they converted the last of these S55s to turbine engines, they did get rid of some of the last few remaining radial engine helicopters, which are getting to be extremely rare now. And you're going to come to find on this channel, I kind of have a secret obsession with, because these radial engine helicopters only existed for a short time. And I really think were machines way ahead of their time. But we'll get more into that in the Sikorsky 55 video. So some of the reasons making this such a desirable helicopter, at least to me, is this thing has a pretty incredible range and a decent fuel economy, I think, for what it is. It's not the fastest machine, but if you include the optional auxiliary tank for another 22 gallons of fuel, if you combine that with the regular tank at 57 gallons, it gives you a combined total of 79 gallons of fuel, which is a pretty incredible amount for any of the helicopters this size. Now, of course, if you do fill up with that full fuel, you're probably not gonna be able to take a full load of four passengers, but you can always fill up less fuel if you're gonna carry more weight, but you can't always add more fuel just because you're carrying less, unless you have the tanks that can hold it, which certainly this helicopter has. Some of the other features that we've talked about in this series that certainly make this helicopter really desirable is it has that three-bladed, fully articulated rotor head, which I'd say overall is the one you want compared to a two-bladed rotor head. Like again, we've mentioned in this series before. And then the last feature, that it only shares with the Robinson R44 compared to other helicopters in its class, is having that back seat and being able to carry up to four people. Because to me, a helicopter like this, oftentimes, is going to be just flown around by one or two people. And having that back seat gives the ability to take pretty much anything you want with you, as far as gear or luggage. And then of course, some of the rare times you do want to be able to take more people up, you can, having that extra row of seats in the back. Which just makes this such a well-rounded and practical helicopter, I think. However, with toting all the strengths of this helicopter, it wouldn't be fair to not show off some of the negatives. This helicopter, as far as I can tell, has no hydraulic assistance on the rotor controls. Which is unfortunate because I definitely think this is a helicopter getting into the size that you would want that. However, just like other helicopters that don't have hydraulics this size, it can be done but just requires a little more manual effort. And then also, like I mentioned in the intro, this helicopter is actually only available in kit form unless you want to buy a used one. And then you're relying on the person who built it before you. Which I'm not saying they did a bad job. Sometimes they actually do better than a factory could do. It just all depends on who built it. And because it is only available in kit form, there's probably not a whole lot of these out flying. Which means it's probably not going to be the most proven design. However, this helicopter is based on a much older piston helicopter called the Sikorsky 52. Which you might want to call the original Robinson. Because it was one of the first piston helicopters, if not the first, four seat helicopter. So because this helicopter is basically a kit form of the Sikorsky S-52. It gets me to the fact that this is kind of a Frankenstein chopper 
different types who wear a day coat, pants with stripes, or cut away coat, perfect fit. From the fact it's a bunch of different pieces kind of put together. So while most of the helicopter is based on the S-52, the nose of this helicopter actually comes from a Bell 206, which I don't necessarily think is a bad thing. This is a great, very popular helicopter, so there's going to be nothing wrong with those components. The Hummingbird came with a lot of different engine options, especially through the years. These engine options include a Lycoming 0435, which produced 265 horsepower, and I think you're going to find on older models. I think usually with the model designation 260. And as far as I know, there's only two model designations for a Hummingbird. There's the 260L, which I believe had the Lycoming 0435 engines. And then the Hummingbird 300L, which is the one they produce now, I believe. And that's going to come with a Titan engine, which as far as I can tell, is a subsidiary of Continental. They're just experimental Continental engines with high performance, basically. And this is an O540 engine that produces 300 horsepower. I don't think this horsepower, though, affects the useful load on either of these models. And they both have a max around 2,800 pounds, max takeoff weight. And then oddly enough, it appears there was another engine option for, again, around 300 horsepower. They could put in a General Motors V8. I'm personally not the biggest fan of automotive engines in aircraft. I think this is an option to be aware of. And that's just simply because aircraft engines compared to car engines are built a lot more with reliability in mind. However, it does appear that some of the GM V8s that they put in these are LS7 models, which I believe come out of Corvettes. So I will say it is pretty cool to have a Corvette engine in your helicopter. And if you did basically have a Sikorsky 52 with a Bell 206 nose, and now a General Motors Corvette engine in it. You can now see why I consider this a bit of a Frankenstein helicopter. Trying mighty hard to look like Gary Cooper. Cooper, Cooper! Now the last, at least I think, interesting feature worth noting about this helicopter that I think is advantageous, especially since no helicopters this size have this, is it actually doesn't have skids for landing gear and has four wheels. Now the reason this is advantageous is without wheels, helicopters can't taxi on the ground and have to hover to taxi anywhere, which obviously can be done. It's just a nice feature to have. And then also, like I think I've mentioned before in this season, but this one obviously does it the best, is a lot of the times wherever you land with a helicopter, you're going to want to be able to stick it in a hangar. And to accomplish this, because like I just mentioned, a helicopter can't really taxi, you have to put on what are called ground handling wheels to move a helicopter with skids anywhere. And if you have a smaller helicopter, like these piston helicopters tend to be, trying to fit those wheels in the helicopter so you have them available wherever you land to put your helicopter in a hangar can start to take up some room in a tiny helicopter. So of course, having these wheels always outside is a big advantage. And if you like this video, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up down below. And as always on this channel, I want to play through the stats on this vehicle at the end of this video. And feel free to pause on any of the charts to read more. And stay tuned for the next episode in this season, where we're going to take a look at probably the most rare private helicopter anyone could have, the Flying Banana. And until next time, I'm James Cooper, and you've been watching Relative Motion.